Hi, welcome to another episode of Tiny Canadian Living Self-Sustaining Series, Episode 4, The Real 4, Water Collection. So in this one, we're going to talk about pretty much the benefits of water collecting and how it's actually really good for uh, becoming self-sustaining as well as being self-sufficient. <sighs> All right. Okay, so the first one is, first one, easy to maintain. Utilizing the rainwater harvesting system provides a certain advantage to the community. First of all, harvesting rainwater allows you to better utilize an energy resource. It is important to do so since drinking water is not easily renewable and it helps in reduce wastage. System for collection of rainwater are based on simple technologies. So the overall cost of their installment and operation is much lesser than that of water purifying or pumping systems. Maintenance requires little time and energy. The result is the collection of water that can be used in a substantial ways, even without purification. So pretty much what that means is it's really easy just to collect rainwater. And by it means like uh, reducing wastage. What it's talking about here is literally when we did the off-grid experiment, I chose to collect my rainwater, use that rainwater for doing dishes. So whatever dishes I had, I washed it. So it went in here, it went to another pail. So yeah, water collection, dishes, and then it went to laundry right under. Same water was used to this one, was to do my laundry, uh, you know, wash my clothes, that kind of stuff, my rags and things like that. Then that water literally went right to the garden. Yeah, it was like ding, 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 ding. Um, if I was to, let's say, bathe, the water literally would go from the main water source to bathing to, to laundry. It would skip dishes and just go to laundry. Laundry was the main cycle of collecting the water and then it would be thrown into the garden. If I wasn't doing laundry, well, obviously it went to the garden that day. So that's pretty much, it's really easy to maintain. You put a bucket under a spout and bam. Um, we often, and I will show you in pictures coming up. Okay, so welcome back. So the picture as you see was, it's, it's a bucket right underneath the spout and it collects the rainwater. Really awesome, really inventive idea that I thought of. So literally, we use those little buckets to fill our three garbage cans up with water. Well, two garbage cans. Um, and the other one is used as our garbage can out at the front of our house to allow um, people passing by instead of throwing their trash on the ground. It gives them the opportunity to actually put it in a garbage can, which Earth is right next to a bus stop. So, okay. Reducing water bills. Water collected in rainwater harvesting systems can be put to use for several non-drinking functions as well for many families and small businesses that lead a large reduction in their utility bills. On an industrial scale, harvesting rainwater can provide the needed amount of water for many operations to take place smoothly without having to deplete the nearby water sources. It also lessens the burden of soil erosion in a number of areas allowing the land to thrive once again. In fact, it can also be stored in cisterns for using during times when water supply is, is at all time low. For example, things like winter, that would be another option where the cisterns would come in uh, collecting water because in the winter time you don't have the, a lot of wi winter places don't have the luxury of that it rains, you know, all the time. Some people live more up north where yeah, you can collect snow that, that's a long process just to make one pot of tea. A long process, like to boil it down. There's more, um, there's less water than it is in snow. So if you go by weight for weight, literally one snowball might be like a couple drops of water. It's not worth it in any way, shape or form. Um, yeah, so this pretty much covers over lowering your water bills. Say you want to just just collecting rainwater around the house. You know, it's great for the kids, teach them to wash their hands all the time. They're right there. Put, put a bar of soap in a pantyhose, tie it, tie it to wherever the water collector is, and they could literally sit there and wash their hands. Great way. 
great and wonderful way to teach the youth about uh, the basics of collecting rainwater and how to use it. Okay, three Number. suitable for ir irrigation. I probably totally pronounced that word wrong, and we're just going to roll with it. <laughs> As such, there is little requirements for building new infra 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 infrastructure infrastructure for the rainwater harvesting system. Most rooftops act as a workable, catchable area, which can be likely linked. As such, there is little requirement of building new infrastructure. This is the Berkey the Light. Harvesting. It accommodates two Most to five people. It's constructed of high impact area, strength, BPA free poly polyester, down, which does not leach foul tasting, plasticizers, or chemicals into your water. water it's shatter resistant and flex. virtually unbreakable. Uh, the storage capacity is, is 2.75 gallons, which is about 10.4 liters if you live in Canada and you follow liters. Rainwater is a free the, from many literally found in each water, filter. For there's two that are in it, but each filter has a lifespan of 22,000 liters, which is about 44,000 500 milliliter water bottles. The, summer months. the retail cost of over that, that is 7,000 uh, for the bottled right water, and which is wow. Four. That's like a comparison of price. These things go for no more than about $300. Really good, really quality. I love the material. I, I love the product. You know what? I, I, I highly urge you to check them out. You can find them at BerkeyWaterFilterCanada.ca. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about the Berkey Canada. All right. Okay, Number so we're going to carry four. on. Reduces the demand of groundwater. With increase in population, the demand for water is also constantly increasing. The end result is that many residential colonies and industries are extracting groundwater to fulfill their daily demands. This has led to the depletion of groundwater, which has gone to a sufficiently low level in some areas where there is a huge water uh, scarcity. Um, pretty much it gets um, Okay, so number five, reduces floods and soil erosion. During the rainy season, rainwater is collected in large storage tanks, which also helps in reducing floods in the in some low-lying areas. Apart from this, it is it also helps in reducing soil erosion and contamination of surface waters with pesticides and fertilizers from rainwater runoff which results in cleaner lakes and ponds. Yeah, so that's really cool. You know, um, when I was doing the off-grid experiment, it was at least a five kilometer walk for me to actually collect my drinking water or I could collect rainwater. Now, the only downfall to rainwater is you can't judge when the weather will come, when the rain will hit. If you're only relying on rainwater, get a lot of buckets and make sure you have a really good flooding system like... Um, Utilize the trees around you to collect all the rainwater and make a spiral into one bucket because if that's all you have that's That can be scary sometimes um, Getting when I was getting really close to the end of the rainwater bucket and I knew you know from um, Looking in the news and stuff that there was no rain coming like you look in the evening be like no dark clouds great um, It does have a downfall like it's five gallons is still like I'm having to carry with two with my arms all the way back for five kilometers, that was a lot. You might be like, oh, that's not really a lot. Be like, carry that every, every, you know, until your, your bucket's full, you know, it, it's kind of actually a lot. Um, so yeah, I believe I had 137 
uh, gallons to fill, so that was pretty huge. No, no, it's not that big. Uh, more like 137 liters or so of rainwater I would collect normally, which isn't a whole lot, but it, it helped. It made the difference. All right. Um, number six can be used for several non-drinking purposes. Rainwater, when collected, can be used for several non-drinking functions, using, including flushing toilets, washing clothes, watering the garden, and washing cars, etc. You, you, you get the gist of it. It is, un it is unnecessary to use pure drinking water if all we need to use it for is a purpose rather than, you know, drinking it. So that is a very high purpose and really awesome way of rain collection. Um, what, what do we use it for normally in our household? We use it for multiple things. I use it very often for um, showering very often. I use it for, for hygiene. I use it. I often we use it for hygiene, you know, washing our hands, um, washing sometimes the dishes. I like to use it for very often for doing laundry. That's a big thing. Um, and then we just reuse the laundry water as uh, well in the, in the warm months, in the spring and summer. We'll just use the laundry um, water to feed the garden. So it has that extra perk. Um, very often it's just literally hygiene, you know. Uh, yeah, hygiene in the garden is pretty much what we use it for. Um, or if I'm washing something, I'll, I'll pull some water out of there and do the all-purpose mix and you know clean something and try to use that water versus water out of the tap. Um, yeah, we do have the luxury of water from the tap, but I try not to use it as much as I can. It, it depends, you know, how much rain do we get versus I want to have a bath. I, I did learn when the experiment was happening, you will learn if water is like you know the last like you don't have a lot of water so to speak like you're doing a lot of water collecting when a rainstorm happens like like i mean like it's coming down that was like the most happiest moment for me not for collecting rainwater well yes for collecting rainwater but i'd be like stripping my clothes off and be like that's free shower because a lot of times when you don't have a lot of water you would literally be using you know just like four liters of water as a bucket water and just sponge bathing because you couldn't afford to waste the water. So often I would just put the, you know, put the four liters into the uh, the solar pack, put it up in the up in the tree and let it, you know, warm up for the evening evening wash. And uh, that was pretty much it. It was it was hard at times. Like I'm not gonna say it was easy. If anything, it was far from being easy. But when it when it would calm down, oh. Oh, did I, I would have like, it would, you know, you're like, oh, but that's cold water. Yeah. Well, I mean, you haven't had a shower in, you know, a real shower and you've just been sponge bathing and you get a real shower and you can just sit there and just take your time and not have to rush. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You just like, la, 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 la. you'd be like watching a guy in a bush, literally taking his sweet time. And you don't have to worry about like worrying about the rinse water because you're like, oh yeah, I'm getting rinsed off, la 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 la. And you wear clean clothes right away. And um, but yeah, it was a really good experiment. I I had a good opportunity when doing it. So, but uh, that's for another time. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you might have learned something from water collection. If you'd like to see more, be sure to make sure to subscribe to see more. And if you like the video, please slam that like button down because those likes actually make us seem like we want to keep making these videos. So greatly appreciate it. All right. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.